He reads more books. <laughs> Somewhere that year, uh, well, every year at the University of Michigan, the University of Michigan, working together with the five top physics scientists in the United States, these are the fathers of the atomic bomb and atomic energy, Oppenheimer and, and, and others. They, they're looking for people to start working in quantum physics. And so they're gleaning, they're calling this, these, these, all these kids in, and she got nominated by her school. So she goes up to Michigan, not knowing what she knows and doesn't know, and she's in this big room with all these kids from Yale and Harvard and everywhere. And the professor, and he's one of the big five that's in on the uh, uh, atomic energy and later on the atomic bomb, he has put a problem on all four walls. That's how they do it, right, physics? And then at, at the bottom of each wall, he's got the answer at that point. And they're going to spend the whole summer working on that one problem. And he will do a tutorial if you think you got the answer, or show me how you got the answer. So they got to do it, and then they got to show them how, he, how, how they got the answer. And that's all they're going to do. So this is really hard stuff. So everybody leaves, and she's sitting there, and she's falling. He comes up, oh, honey, what's wrong? And she says, I tried to work this, and I got the wrong answer. And he, 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 he fell in his chair laughing so hard, and he said, well, honey, he said, it's going to take all summer to get that answer. You, you can't, but let me look to see your work, see if you have way to know what you're doing. So he starts looking at it. And he looks at it. He looks at it. And he's sweating. And he gets out of a pen and goes up the thing and he says, oh my gosh, you got the right answer. I had the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> he calls Robin, uh, Robert Oppenheimer at the University of California, Berkeley. And I said, I got your graduate student. Oppenheimer's first graduate student, University of Berkeley. So she goes there, and uh, of course, uh, the, the rest is, is history there. Uh, they actually do a formula together. She does several papers. I, I've looked them up. You can find them. Google them uh, on scientific papers. She had a slew of them on physics and, and uh, quantum theory and that kind of thing. But her, her and, and Robert Oppenheimer, the father, the father of the atomic bomb, uh, uh, did one together that's still used today. It's called the Oppenheim, uh, Oppenheimer Phillips uh, procedure process, I think. And you know, you, you never get your name in front of Oppenheimer, I guess. <laughs> I was told about Melba Phillips right before she died. I had a student that's working at the uh, Amber Manor there in Petersburg. A student came to me and said, you want to come see this lady? There's people from all over the world every day, Russians, Chinese, Hungarians, you know, all over the world coming to see this lady and talking to her. We don't know why or how or when or what's going on. And uh, that's, that's how I got wind of She passed away shortly before that. Uh, if you would, uh, oh, there, that's the dress she made. Uh, she, she made by herself. They were very poor. And uh, she made it in there in Pike County before she went out to California. It's a, it's a nice picture of her. And uh, the last two there, 1965, we finally honored her at uh, alum, alumnus of the year and gave her an honorary doctoral degree. And then she funded the Jordan Scholarship, William Jordan Scholarship, she endowed it. Didn't she? And it also showed a picture of the audience. That's kind of neat too because. Nothing's much changed, what well, it has now, but in, up until our day, uh, that's, that's what it looked like. The cow palace. Yeah. Yeah, the cow palace. Uh, I could regale you with more stories, but I think you, you probably heard enough. Uh, there are extra copies of that article on the table, and you can order the, that uh, journal, that particular issue. Looks like it's the summer of 2018. It's from the Indiana Historical Society in the bookstore there. Look at it. But, uh, she done us well, but I gotta tell you, you've done us well too. Everybody out there, you've all touched lives. And I know I've, I saw some of you that had my sons in classes and teachers, and, and uh, you know, they still talk. They still talk about that. Yes.
Linda, here's a question. Was Dr. Jerry Phillips kin to Melba? No. No. He claimed he was three years. But yeah, long. I think I, you, Jerry said he thought he was oh. distantly. <laughs> but see, they're from they're from Pike County. Yeah. And uh, you know, they're related to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Susan, do you know much about the family now, where they're at? I mean, they're, they're farmers mostly, aren't they? Yes, and uh, I think her, I think her great niece is in the nursing home. Great, great nieces in the nursing home, too. Right. You might mention the historical markers. Oh, yes. Yes, folks. In uh, late October, I think October the 29th, is that right? Uh, uh, round off, round, you'll, you'll, you'll get their award. But Founders Day. Founders Day. Uh, there's going to be a marker, a historical marker, uh, placed recognizing Melba Phillips and the impact of Oakland City College on her life and the gift that was for the nation. So that's going to be a really nice uh, recognition. And I'll say one more thing about Melba Phillips now. I've been writing about her a long time, but I'm not going to be able to write a biography about her because she's become a celebrity among women historians and feminists and in, in, in this day of political correctness, if you're a guy, you can't write about a woman. Mm -hmm. So I have given my material. I've chosen someone that helped us get the marker that I think is going to do a good job. And uh, she's a, a young gal. She's working on her, her uh, graduate degree at IUPUI. I said, Jill, this is yours. I know you'll do a good job with it. So she's really excited about it. So we'll, we'll see a book out there. And she'll, she'll do Oakland City well, because I'll make her. But, but <laughs> she, she has all this information. In fact, she came and she visited the campus just to see. Uh, she wanted to see the grade book to see those grades. That was interesting there, too. Uh, kind of to the side, I'm doing a similar thing with Gil Hodges. Um, I started looking at Gil Hodges' story uh, in, in the biographies, but also in the collegians and so forth. This was a turning place for him. He had such a poor season his first year in, in maybe he was, he's attended here two years. He came back here to become a teacher because he didn't think he was going to make it as a baseball player. And uh, I always wondered why, and I thought, wait a minute, I got all the grades. Well, I kind of told the tale. So I'm with baseball and he didn't want to get Any other questions about Melbourne? Okay, well, thank you very much for your attention. I enjoyed sharing that with you. celebrate the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Do we have any veterans here today? Would you please stand? No, not D-Day veterans. <laughs> Many veterans. <laughs> Our 50th year class was graduated from what was then Oakland City College. 
want to honor you today. Would you please come forward and be recognized? I'd like to have a group picture up here. someone that's given long, dedicated service to OCU. Today's recipient is a faculty member who's given 20 years of service to our school. Not only does she teach a full load of classes, she is also director of OCU's Acorn Academy. The Acorn Academy program provides after-school tutoring for elementary students to enable them to be successful. Our own, our own OCU students apply to be tutors and invest their time in these students. Last year, there were more than 70 elementary students in the Acorn program. In addition to this, she has written and received multiple grants to support the Acorn Academy to be the best it can be. She is truly making a difference in the lives of our students and future students. The 
Special Service Award for 2019 is presented to Dr. Cammie Davis. Special Achievement Award is presented to someone who has been successful in his or her career. Today's recipient is retired from 40 years of service to the citizens of Indiana as a member of the Indiana House of Representatives and the Indiana Senate. During his career, he's been a true friend of Oakland City University. Today's recipient is Dr. Lyndall Hume, a member of the class of 1969. Institute a new award called the True Blue Mighty Oak Award. It could also be called the Unsung Hero Award. The four recipients today have proved to be true blue in a number of ways. They have been willing to take on responsibilities when asked, they've provided time, talent, and treasure to the university and continue to have a positive influence. These are people that just bring a blessing with them. I would like to ask that all four recipients come forward at once. I'm proud to present our True Blue Mighty Oak Medallion to Derek Barton, class of 1987. <laughs> Dr. Steve Custer, class of 2017. <laughs> Reverend Billy Secoy, class of 1961. Gay Weir, class of 1975. Stay here with Billy. Billy, get a picture. Billy. Billy, get a picture. Oh. You're both. You stay here. Well, someone's going to shoot that camera. She's got it. She's got it. Oh, yeah. Judy. Judy, shoot that camera. Yeah, she's <laughs> now. She's oh, okay. she's good. Jamie, stand up. Oh, I don't know. Turned off. It's not turned off. You got to look through the hole. It's not oh. the newest one in the face. I'm sorry. Represents. This year we have two recipients that truly fulfilled the criteria for Alumnus of the Year. They have brought honor and recognition to themselves and to the university by their careers in education and their passion for research. Their joint efforts have been invaluable in keeping the history of the university and the Cochrane legacy alive for future generations. Their books have honored veterans that sacrificed so much for this nation. It is with great pleasure that we present the Alumnus of the Year Award for 2019 to Dr. Randy and Dr. Roxanne Mills. Thank you for making us proud and remind us of where we've come from. secrets. <laughs> At this time, Brian Baker, Associate VP of Develop or Advancement, will make closing remarks. Thank you. Let's give all of our recipients today another round of applause. <laughs> and if we could, uh, would you 
Would you help me in thanking Susan Sullivan for all of her hard work today? Thank you, Susan. Next week in the United States, we will honor and remember Father's Day. And as I look across the room, I see many, many fathers. We have heard today from Dr. Mills about many fathers of Oakland City University. If you'll let me for a minute just recognize and honor some of those people, I'll do this quickly. Colonel William Cochran, who donated the land for Oakland City College in 1885. William Cochran and his father, James Cochran, were essential leaders in bringing a college to Oakland City in the late 19th century. In addition, both father and son were heavily part of the Underground Railroad prior to the Civil War. A man who I have known to come and love and recognize is Dr. William P. Deering, who class of 1895 was Oakland City's second president. A lot of people think Dr. Deering was the first president, but he was the second president. He was also the first baccalaureate degree of Oakland City College. Dr. Deering served as second president of Oakland City for over 40 years, and he started as president at 28 years old. Can you imagine being president at 28? He was also the father to William C. Derrick, a proud Oakland City College alumnus who possessed a PhD. And this Dr. Derrick worked for the Atomic Energy Commission. Other fathers, we've heard today about William Pop Jordan, who was a professor of history. Well, let me tell you about another man named Ella Roberts, who campaigned for $500,000 in endowment in a time when the state of Indiana said, you at least need to have $500,000 in reserves. Dr. James Cox, another president of Oakland City College, you'll recognize Cox Hall, named after Dr. Cox. But he declared this, Oakland City should not close its doors like many other small colleges. And in the year of 1950, he aptly announced that Oakland City College had an increase in enrollment. Next, we honor Dr. Ernest G. Chapman, who we were talking about today, class of 1936, served as president for 10 years. But he also served the denomination and served as the first General Baptist at the pastor at the First General Baptist Church here in Oakland City. We recognize Dr. Chapman's work, and you'll recognize the name of Chapman Seminary as Oakland City's Association of Theological Schools accredited school. Two more, Dr. Carl E. Shepard, president, class of 1942. Many of you remember Dr. Shepard. He was a professor of history and German, academic dean, president of Oakland City College, an avid violin maker. He loved Oakland City. He loved its students. Dr. James W. Murray began serving as president in 1974 and had a distinguished career as a Marine Corps colonel, awarded three Purple Hearts and a Bronze Star for bravery. Under Dr. Murray's leadership, many innovative programs were created, indebtedness was eliminated, and a sizable endowment was established thanks to Dr. Murray. More fathers of Oakland City, Dr. Jack Chisner, Vice President for Development. He served OCU well in donor development and creation of new buildings and endowments. Dr. Ward Johnson, and Wanda Johnson's here today. Could Wanda stand? I don't know where she is. Thank you. Mr. Wanda Johnson. He served OCU well as Vice President and General Baptist. Dr. Richard Beasley, also Vice President. But we know Dr. Beasley from the Spirit Can. The Spirit Can is still used at home basketball games and still being used by our students. Dr. Jerry Phillips, Vice President for Academic Affairs, gave his life to see the advancement of Oakland City College, Oakland City University. Dr. Phillips was known for academic success, leading all efforts around student achievement. Mrs. Judy Phillips. <laughs> Dr. Glenn Spence, recently passed a true gentleman, was a proud Oakland City alumnus, working as executive director for General Baptist, but also an administrator here at Oakland City College. There are many more. Mr. Wayne Rowland, Mr. Charlie Weir, Dr. William Hasselbrink, 
Dr. Bernard Marley, Mr. Ron Malin. I could go on and on about others who have served Oakland City University and served as well. But there's one last father of Oakland City University that I want to mention. President Dr. Ray G. Barber. Dr. Barber has served Oakland City University in many capacities during his time. He was a professor of religious studies, dean of Chapman Seminary, executive vice president, and eventually president. Dr. Barber will be known for numerous achievements, but perhaps he will be remembered for what he calls, in his words, his love for students. His vision for the university centers around two words, spiritual formation. And as Dr. Barber explains, this can easily be described in three areas, the head, the heart, and the hands. However, Dr. Barber was not alone in his service to Oakland City University. Mrs. Beth Barber could always be found by his side as First Lady and as directing the operations in the business office as the Chief Financial Officer. It has been met, said many times that the Barbers themselves, they've said this, that when Dr. Murray called for them to come back to Oakland City, that he really wanted Beth, but he would take Ray as part of that package deal. <laughs> As it was said earlier, uh, Dr. Barber is here. He's here today with Beth, and I'd like to, for them to join me at the podium with Susan Sullivan. Would you please come forward? It is with great honor that we present Dr. and Mrs. Barber with the Distinguished Alumnus Award. The plaque reads, the Alumni Association of Oakland City University presents this Distinguished Alumnus Award to Dr. Ray and Mrs. Beth Barber, President and First Lady of Oakland City University, 2008 to 2019, in gratitude and appreciation for your service to and support of the alumni of Oakland City University. May God bless you as you enter the next chapter of your lives, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, Plans to give you hope in the future. June 8th, 2019. until I get so fat that you can't rope me out. Uh, but uh, God has been good to me. Uh, it's kind of ironical. Actually, 50 years ago this year, I started pastoring my first church. And I was still in high school. I, I did graduate high school. 46 years ago, Beth and I got married. Uh, she was still in high school. But uh, I was already pastoring the church full time. And uh, we've been blessed with Charity and her husband and our two grandsons. But more than that, we have just been blessed by the faithfulness of God. There's been times that we didn't know how we were going to make the bills, and God was faithful. There have been times that we have wondered how we were going to make it through some things, and God has been faithful. I watched Beth, right after being elected president, fight her battle with cancer in a text that Brian just read became our motto. And I watch God reach down and use other people. And she's well and she's whole today because God has been faithful. And I really do not know what tomorrow holds. But I know this, God will continue to 
to be faithful. I'm running late today simply because we have another individual that has been very faithful to Oakland City University by the name of Elmer Chancellor, who served uh, as a trustee here for 25 years, who's a uh, son and daughter, or daughter-in-law and son-in-law, all are alums of Oakland City University who passed away and I had part in his funeral. I was able to look at Bertie and say, you know what, Bertie? When you think about death, Albert hasn't ceased to exist. We believe that God's people continue on. He hasn't ceased his fellowship with the Lord, and he hasn't ceased his love for you. As long as you live, he's going to be right there in your heart. The only thing death means is that today, Elmer no longer has to fight with the struggles. He's been set free, and, and God has already promised to take care of that because he's said that he's going to dwell with his people, wipe away every tear from their eye. There'll be no more death, nor any more pain, because God is faithful from the start. And I don't know how it's going to end, but I know this, God will be faithful at the ending of it all. Thank you for your prayers. Pray for us in this time of transition. Pray for the uh, Board of Trustees and, and Search Committee who are involved within the search for a new president. I do believe that God will once again show up and be faithful. Thank you for your confidence. Thank you. Thank you again for being here today, and thank you for allowing me to remember some of the fathers of Oakland City University, men that I admire with the utmost respect. These men gave of their time, their talents, and their treasure to see that Oakland City University advances forward. I'll leave you with this. Dr. Deering, as I mentioned, the second president of Oakland City College, felt so strongly about the university that he left $100,000 in his estate for a scholarship fund, which in today's dollars might translate to a million dollars. But Oakland City University can only move forward because of the people in this room, because you and I as alumni support our alumni association. That is the truest barometer of the health of this university and the health of the alumni association. Let me say thank you for your giving. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for supporting students. They are worthy of your support. Let us all remember to give in order to send forth that next generation of Oakland City University alumni. Thank you. May God richly bless you. And now, let us join together in singing the Oakland City alma mater. Please stand. <laughs> 